Hello everyone. A question which is often asked is, is Tantra the same thing as yoga? Well, the answer to that is, depends what yoga we are talking about. As many of you know, there are many different kinds of yoga which exist. In the ancient times, there were some traditional forms of yoga that were known in India, such as Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, and Jnana Yoga, and a few others as well. But the thing is that not all yoga actually has a connection or even originates from the Tantric tradition. Tantra, as many of you probably know by now, is a system of spiritual teaching which has one main focus, and that is Shakti, or energy. And that means that the Tantric teachings always revolve around Shakti, they always utilize the energy as its main factor. Now, when it comes to the yogic teachings that originate from Tantra, no surprise there, they also include Shakti. So any form of yoga, most likely, that involves energy will be a Tantric type of yoga practice. That means it originates from Tantra or simply it falls under the category of Tantric teaching. Classic examples would be Kundalini Yoga, where we have the Kundalini Shakti, that's how it's called, Kundalini Energy or Kundalini Shakti, and that is part of the Tantric tradition. Hatha Yoga, where we involve the polarity of the energy, and that also is all about energy. Then we have other forms of yoga that some of you may have not heard of, such as Kashmiri Shaivism, a very powerful form of yoga from Kashmir, which is actually the highest form of Tantra. We also have another one which is quite unknown, such as Laya Yoga, and Laya Yoga is a classic form of yoga which is Tantric, 100%. And there are many others that some of you may have never heard of, which are yogic practices that are part of Tantra. However, there are some styles of yoga which are not Tantric, which means energy is not to focus in those yoga practices. It's more about concentrating on some forms of mental procedures or mental activities, and more importantly, consciousness-oriented yoga practices, such as Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, and there are other few styles of yoga, which we can simply define as more ascetic, more consciousness-oriented yoga, and not so much focusing on the energy. And those are the two differences between the yogic styles, which are purely tantric, and those yoga styles, which are not really coming from the tantric tradition. And that's the difference. So yes, yoga is definitely integrated into the tantric teachings, but not all types of yoga, only those which are energy oriented. And that should answer that question. When we're talking about modern styles of yoga, as opposed to the traditional authentic forms of yoga, this one is a very important question. It is very vital because it touches the core of the yogic teachings. In the ancient times in India, yoga was a very well-known path for spiritual liberation. Originally, that's what yoga was all about. It is a path to reach spiritual union with the divine. In fact, that's the meaning of the word yoga. Yoga comes from the root word yug in Sanskrit, which actually means union. This is the union between the microcosm, or the personal level of the human being, and the macrocosm, the universal aspect of reality. And that type of unity is what yoga eventually is all about. The authentic forms of yoga in India, and later on in Tibet and other countries, were yogic practices that were meant not only for the physical body, and that's very important to emphasize. The physical body was used as an instrument to take you into deeper levels of the being, from the practices of the asanas, the mudras, the bandhas, and the various other pranayamas and so on, various other techniques which are used in the authentic yogic teachings. Going from those techniques deeper means that you go from the physical exertion and movement of the physical body, the lymphatic system, and whatever else is involved, Slowly, slowly, the yogi will notice, as they practice seriously, that they will start having effects also which are energetical, also emotional and deeper effects on the personality, on the aspects of the emotion, as I said, of the human being, but it even goes deeper to the mind and the way we think. It changes the mind 
of the person, which eventually can allow the practitioner to go even beyond the mind, two levels which we would call metaphysical or even simply spiritual. You can call it going from the physical body all the way to the level of the soul. That's how yoga is supposed to take the person to higher and higher levels. I'm not saying the authentic yoga is not amazing in healing. It is. It's amazing even in emotional balance. It can bring amazing results in purifying the mind. All these things and many more things will be available as you practice the authentic forms of yoga. But eventually, like it or not, it will take you to higher levels of consciousness. Now, having said all that, that's the authentic form of yoga. The modern way that yoga is presented in many modern styles, and I don't need to mention too many names, you're familiar if you go in your local gym or in some hot yoga studio or one of these places, usually yoga is presented as a form of physical exertion. It's a kind of gymnastics or aerobics, no more than that really. You do this type of so-called modern yoga practice, it's true that there's some elements of spirituality which somehow the practitioners are trying to add, like offering namaste to each other, like trying to use some mantras, or maybe trying to use some other elements. But eventually the core aspect of spiritual practice, which authentic yoga insists upon, is totally ignored. And to be honest, it's unknown, if we're honest, with these modern styles of yoga. They become very body-oriented. And to take the magnificent, amazing spectrum of spiritual practice that yoga is really about, at least authentically, and to reduce it only to the physical body, may present some limitations. Is it bad? No. I'm saying modern styles of yoga can be very beneficial. You can have a lot of good physical effects, you can have good distressing effects on the body. You can have some purification by sweating and releasing some toxins from your body. You can have a lot of beneficial effects. But the only issue here is that this is level of yoga which is very body oriented. And you may be missing in most cases all the deeper effects of yoga which the authentic yoga is all about. Most modern styles of yoga don't really know much about the chakras. They don't know much about how the energy flows through the body. They don't know much about how you should concentrate while doing the yoga. In fact, concentration of the mind is completely ignored in modern forms of yoga. And to do yoga, which is body oriented, that means you're focusing only on the muscles, on the oxygen going in and out of your lungs, while your mind can be going to some very chaotic places, in your mind, you could be thinking about the shopping mall or about cooking or about any other thing that might pop up in your mind while physically you're supposed to be doing yoga. Then you have a disconnect between the body and the mind. That's not how yoga should be done. Authentically, the way yoga was taught in ancient India, it was a body-mind connection, which means you're doing the yoga practice and you are in full concentration of the mind, not only on the body. You concentrate on the energy, on the correlated chakra, because different techniques activate different chakras in your body. You need to know which, which you will not find this knowledge in an average gym. And when you do the right type of practice, then the effects become phenomenal. Otherwise, the effects will be simply limited to the physical level. I had some good workout, I feel nice in my body, maybe I've had some detox, that's wonderful. Okay, if this is as far as you want to go, then the modern style of yoga is definitely sufficient. And again, I'm not against it. For some people, this is perfect and that's all they need. Some of you might say, you know, in this life, I'm not really interested in reaching Buddhahood or some high levels of consciousness. I don't have time and I'm not interested in that. I just need some type of physical exercise with an oriental or mysterious, uh, you know, India kind of flair to it that gives me a little bit of good feeling, purifies my body and I feel like I had a good workout and that's all I need to do twice a week or something like that to support me when I'm doing business or working or taking care of a family. I need a bit of support to calm down. If that's what you need, then definitely the modern styles of yoga, they, they fit perfectly with that. Some people do jogging, others do gymnastics. You may want to choose to do some of these modern styles of yoga for the same more or less results. However, if anyone prefers to really go deep and understand the real meaning of yoga, 
When you look at the history of yoga, when you study the yoga texts, and there are ancient yogic texts, and I can mention a few of them, such as, for example, the Shiva Samhita, the Garanda Samhita, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, and many other texts which are classic ancient yogic texts, you find that in those texts they describe the yogic system exactly as I said, as a system of growth, of development, and even spiritual evolution. It is meant to take you further on your path, and not just to keep you at the level of a body worker or some person who does good exercise on a regular basis. And that's why you need to choose which path fits for you. If you're asking me what are the difference between the two, well, now you have the answer. Well, as I said, the yogic system is a practice or a system of practices and techniques which are meant to bring the human being to evolve spiritually. That is exactly what Tantra is all about. The only difference is that, that the Tantric teachings include more than just yoga. They include rituals, they include different aspects of energy work, they include the use of yantras, mantras, and many other things uh, and various methodologies. For example, in the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra, one of the fundamental texts of the Tantric tradition, they mention 112 different techniques for reaching high states of consciousness. So the Tantric tradition is a wide scope, it's a canopy of teaching, which yoga, especially the energy-oriented yoga, fits perfectly within that umbrella of spiritual teachings. So that's the connection between yoga and Tantra. If we're talking about the modern styles of yoga that I've mentioned earlier, these are styles of yoga which are more body-oriented and they're not really having much to do with Tantra because the knowledge of energy and understanding how to work with energy uh, the speciality of working with energy doesn't exist in that level. And then, of course, that has nothing to do with Tantra. But those yoga styles that have come and originate from ancient times, from the Tantric times, they fit perfectly with the Tantric tradition and fall together with the canopy of knowledge from Tantra.